What's up guys, Jacob from Dangerville here. You know, it kind of irks me that in the lore of the Jurassic franchise that they decided to kill off or get rid of all the dinosaurs on Site B, Isla Sorna. Sure, they added some good points as to why this happened, but a part of me just hates thinking that there will no longer be a mysterious and deadly island full of thousands of dinosaurs anymore. But enough from me. Here's Altiori. She's a nice Sheila, so make sure and subscribe to her channel. See you guys. Thanks, Jacob. Well, as he said, Isla Sorna's sentence has already been established. Last time we were on Isla Sorna, the much larger island called Site B, was Jurassic Park 3. It's where we met those charismatic, wild, organized raptors, and we discovered other dino species not on InGen's list that were being made illegally. The Spinosaurus. <laughs> Originally, dinosaurs were cloned on that island and then transported to Site A, or Isla Nublar, to be shown off at the park. Since Isla Sorna is a much larger island than Isla Nublar, it made sense for the more intricate manufacturing processes of dinosaurs to be run there. But with all the illegalities taking place, it garnered unwanted attention. Long story short, after Ms. Ronnie took over Ham's dream, he gathered up all the dinosaurs from Isla Sorna and transported them to Isla Nublar, where they would be attractions in Jurassic World. Many of the older dinosaurs you saw in Jurassic World came from Isla Sorna. Any dinosaurs that were not brought to Jurassic World were not done so because they were presumed dead. Here is proof via an excerpt from the Dinosaur Protection Group website. It's from the article called What Killed the Gene Guard Act. The new species were grown in secret on Isla Sorna, Site B, and experimented on over a period of nine months, starting just 100 days after the company was bought by Ms. Ronnie Global. Incubation was achieved covertly and quickly to evade attention. Only a select few InGen members were involved and their names have been removed from records. It is unclear whether Mizrani Global CEO, the late Simon Mizrani, was aware of the violation of law. The research and growth of these animals were filed under early R&D for Jurassic Park's second incarnation and simultaneously amalgam testing. Now, listen to this part very carefully. The new species included Ankylosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Corythosaurus, and Spinosaurus. All were abandoned on Site B until the surviving animals were reportedly moved to Nublar to be housed as future attractions at Jurassic World. A number of these new animals had originally been reported by the survivors of the plane crash on Isla Sorna during the summer of 2001, but the information was quickly buried by bribed officials." End quotes. Let's take a closer look at the word reportedly. The definition of reportedly is according to what someone says. It's used to express the speaker's belief that the information given is not necessarily true. So. Ziad Rodriguez, the author of this article, does not believe either one of two things or both, that all the surviving animals were moved to Isla Nublar or that the so-called surviving dinosaurs were the only ones alive. Well, another thing that is subtly hints to by the way she writes is a possibility of the surviving dinosaurs being brought to Isla Nublar, but not all of them. It's as if she wants us to take these reports with a grain of salt. But here's another interesting article by the same author. This article is called A History of Dino Ethical Misconduct, and an excerpt from it says, During the park's lengthy construction, the biosphere and territories the dinosaurs had established on Isla Sornas and Nublar were thrown into chaos as the animals were unceremoniously shipped among islands to be used as theme park attractions. Here's another way to say that paragraph. While the park was being built, the ecology of the islands of Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna were chaotic, so the animals were snatched up rudely and quickly from their homes and shipped off to some other islands. Other islands that are not Isla Sorna and Isla Nublar? Well, of course, why would they be shipped back and forth from those islands if both those islands were in disarray? It had to have meant that dinosaurs were shipped off to other islands. 
So, this complicates things, because not only is there a possibility that there were dinosaurs still alive in Isla Sorna, but also on other islands, but that's a topic for another video. As far as anyone knows or wants us to know, Isla Sorna is completely void of dinosaurs. But how do they know for absolute sure that every single dinosaur is dead on Isla Sorna? If it's one recurring theme that has been hammered into our heads from the start of Jurassic Park, it's that life finds a way, and humans cannot control the existence of the dinosaurs. Which is ironic because they did. They brought them back to life, but now they can't seem to kill them. But anyways, is it also possible that the Velociraptors are still alive or smaller species of dinosaurs are still kicking on Sarcasm Island? The answer is certainly. Isla Sorna is about four times bigger than Isla Nublar, and it is quite possible that there are sections of that island that are still untouched. When Eric and Ben were sailing over the island in Jurassic Park 3, most of the trees we saw below them were miles of thick, dense forests that looked as though they have not been touched at all. The dinosaurs, after everything, would also have learned to avoid humans. There were no humans to really document how many dinosaurs have bred. Anything they saw was based strictly on what Alan Grant and the Kirbys observed, or anyone else who went to the island happened to see, which could not be everything. It's not so wrong to speculate that intelligent animals, like the velociraptors we saw in Jurassic Park 3, would witness humans rounding up dinosaurs to carry them to Isla Nublar, and know to keep themselves hidden or to venture farther away from where humans were. Places that had not been touched whatsoever by humans. To our knowledge as well, none of these dinosaurs had trackers in them either. Therefore, it is completely possible and even very likely that there are dinosaurs still alive on Isla Sorna. You may be saying, Altiori, what about the dinosaurs' heat signature? Isn't it possible for them to have been trapped via thermal vision? Hmm. While it's possible, in dense foliage, it's not as effective. Especially if what you're tracking is standing still or is at a very low elevation. If the area of trees are so thick that they act as a blanket canopy, then it's not impossible to locate dinosaurs with thermal vision, especially much smaller ones such as raptors. There are other possibilities that would make it hard to track down smaller dinosaurs. Creatures like the raptors or compies could take refuge in dens or dark areas, and then being mixed in with frog DNA can also allow them to have the ability to hide thermally. So, how do we know the raptors or smaller animals would hide in a den or a small cave? Well, easy. In Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, we saw the compies nesting in an upside down vehicle only moments before Blue comes out of her hiding spot. In Jurassic Park 3, when Amanda Kirby was running away, we saw where the nest was situated for those velociraptors, under the darkest parts of the forest. It was clearly daytime when the events took place, but as she walked farther and deeper into the forest, you could clearly see that no light was penetrating through there, and the only remnants of light that were came from the clearing they were just in. Velociraptors are also very smart. If they've had other animals, said the humans, stumble upon their nest before, realizing they were out in the open, the raptors would have learned quickly to make their nest in an area more clandestine. Also consider the novel Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton when Grant and the others were trying to find their raptor nest. Give a listen. Grant was listening to the earphones. The beeping stopped. He's gone. They hurried forward and found in the midst of the rocks a small hole, like a rabbit hole. It was perhaps two feet in diameter. As they watched, the juvenile raptor reappeared, blinking in the light. Then it scampered away. He tied the camera to a rope, turned it on, and lowered it down the hole. There was enough light along the upper tunnel for them to see smooth dirt walls. And then the tunnel opened out suddenly, abruptly. Over the microphone, they heard a squeaking sound. Then a lower trumpeting sound. More noises coming from many animals. Sounds like the nest, all right. Why don't they go outside? They're nocturnal. Yes, but it almost seems like they're hiding. In Michael Crichton's book, wild raptors took refuge underground or in a dark place hidden away from the outside. Ergo, it's very possible that these raptors would have gotten wise and done the same thing, and in doing so, they would have evaded thermal detection. To sum up everything, with Isla Sorna being as large as it is, with all the activity of the Jurassic World events, it's most likely that the humans could have missed dinosaurs still existing on Isla Sorna altogether. Ian Malcolm's statement of our world becoming that of a Jurassic world would make more sense if dinosaurs were on several locations as well as the mainland. 
What do you think about all this, guys? What is the likely chance dinosaurs may still be walking around in the dense forests of Isla Sorna, or even the possibility that those very raptors or some of the dinosaurs in Isla Sorna were shipped off to other islands altogether? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to head on over to Dangerville to get some more Jurassic Park content. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Altiori. You ask, we answer.